The trembling of the ancient dungeon's floor was not merely an earthquake, but something much more sinister, something maybe intelligent. One thing's for certain. There's a fungus among us. Hello and welcome to Monster of the Week, the show where we dig up old creatures from past editions of Dungeons and Dragons and other tabletop games and bring them to light for use in your current 5th edition D&D campaign. My name is Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today we are talking about a giant great ball of fungus. The Ascomoid, like many of the weirdest monsters in the game, came to us originally in ad and I'm pretty sure it was originally instituted as a sort of dungeon trap slash monster, similar to the gelatinous cube. A creature that you wouldn't ever really just encounter out in the wilderness. I mean, I guess you could, but most of the time it's going to be used in the depths of the dungeon and its long, narrow hallways. So what exactly is an Ascomoid? Well, it is exactly like I said, a giant rolling ball of fungus. Now it isn't just a carnivorous plant, it is a creature, it has a very low intelligence score, but it is actively hunting the players. It does this by rolling over and crushing its victims to death, releasing spores on them, and then allowing their bodies to grow into more fungus. Fungus and molds are just so gross, which is why they make great D&D monsters. So today, as always, we are going to talk about just exactly what this creature can do in combat, the ways that you might want to use it against your players, and of course some plot hooks and ways you can introduce them into your campaign that might not be immediately obvious and or conventional. If you want to follow along while I'm talking about combat, there is a link to my version of the 5th edition stat block in the description below, which you can check out. Otherwise, let's just get right into it and talk about about some. So I feel like the Ascomoid isn't the most subtle creature. You see a giant ball of living fungus, you can pretty much understand how it's going to operate. Its body is covered with all these little holes and divots and fleshy valves that can blast spores out of them, which function not only as a means to spread their spores, but also as a means to kind of propel them in different directions. So of course, its only physical attack is a slam attack. It's gonna try to slam into its target, causing bludgeoning damage. But the bludgeoning damage is not the only risk here. See, just by making contact with it, there's a residual chance that it might infect a creature with its spores. This ultimately culminates in the creature being hit by the Ascomoid to make a constitution saving throw. If they fail that saving throw, they have been infected by the creature's spores. So what does that mean? Well, for starters, it means they're poisoned. This means that they have disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. That kind of sucks. How long does it last for, I hear you asking? Well, unlike most poisons in 5th edition, this poison is not simply coursing through your veins and you get to make constitution saving throws until you overcome it. You've been infected by spores now. So the short answer is forever. It doesn't go away unless you can cast some type of spell or drink some type of potion that cures poisons or diseases, which you're gonna want to do. Because while immediately it might not seem to do much other than the disadvantage of being poisoned, quite literally, it also slowly wears down its target's strength. Every six hours, the poison target's strength score is reduced by 1d4. That's right, we're talking about ability damage. Ability damage is exceedingly rare in 5th edition. The only creature I know of in the original monster manual that had it was the Shadow. Although there might be one or two other ones that I'm not thinking of, but point is, it's not common. Strength ability damage sucks, especially for strength focused characters, because potentially one of their primary stats is going to start whittling away. What's happening is the person's body is literally being infected and taken over by these spores, which are spreading themselves and their mycelial network throughout the creature's body. That's super gross, and if you don't do anything about that, by the time that person's strength score reaches zero, they die. But the horror does not end in death. Because once that creature is dead, in 1d4 days, a really gross fungal stalk is going to start sprouting up out of their body, and from that stalk will grow 
another ascomoid. This is how they propagate their species, by spreading their spores onto living creatures. And if the slam attack is still found wanting, they do actually have an ability to jet spores out of their body at an area out of one of the numerous openings on the spherical body of the Ascomoid. What this does mechanically is when they shoot out this jet of spores, it creates a 10-foot cloud of spores focused on an area that is centered on a point within 30 feet of them. This lacks the actual damage dealing properties of the slam attack, but all creatures within that cloud have to make that same constitution saving throw, and if they failed, they're poisoned and infected by the spores. And that's pretty much what they want to do, is slam down their targets, infect them with spores, and hopefully kill the host so they don't have a chance to get away and maybe get cured of the disease. I've also given them a couple other fun options. I gave them the charge trait, similar to what the Minotaur has, which basically if they move more than 10 feet in a straight line, it allows their bludgeoning attack, that slam, to do a little bit more damage, because, you know, they have the momentum behind them of rolling more than 10 feet. And speaking of momentum, I actually gave them a trait which is kind of relevant to an ability they have in the original AD&D stat block. The way that these guys used to work is their movement speed, as long as they kept moving in a straight line, would double every turn. So they would go from being able to move 15 feet to 30 feet to 60 feet. I think that's a cool idea, but it's also a little bit clunky in terms of actually running a combat. So I basically melded that down into 5th edition style to make it, you know, easier to use, and gave it a trait called Momentum, where if it uses its entire 30 feet movement to go in a straight line, on its next turn it can dash as a bonus action, thus allowing it to move 60 feet, as long as, you know, it continues to move in that straight line. While not necessarily the most important ability in the world, I really wanted to find a way to incorporate that into the new stat block, because I love the idea of the players seeing this giant moldy fungus ball thing rolling towards them, and they're like, oh, that's pretty far away, we should avoid that, let's go this way. And then you get them to roll initiative or whatever, and the turn after that, it doubles its speed and keeps picking up towards them, making them realize suddenly like, oh, we're in a bit of a situation here. Essentially, this entire creature's body functions as a sort of sensory organ, similar to the way that gelatinous cubes work. So that does grant it blind sight, but only out to 10 feet, meaning that it can kind of be aware of things that are immediately in front of it, but outside of that, it's relying on tremor sense to be able to hunt its prey down. The typical modus operandi of this thing is when a moving living creature gets within 60 feet of it, it detects their presence, and then it starts rolling. But, of course, the one drawback to having tremor sense is that it cannot detect anything that is not touching the ground. Meaning if your players are aware of this and they get cheeky with some levitate magic or even casting fly on themselves or something else akin to that, this thing's not going to be able to know where they are unless they're standing literally right in front of it. That's definitely a very hidden and subtle weakness of this creature, but one your players absolutely can and should exploit if they're able to figure it out. But I think we've all got a pretty good idea of how this giant ball of death fungus operates, so let's take a break from mechanics and talk about some... Rolling around at the speed of fungus. I imagine when the Ascomoid was first created, it was idealized as this sort of trap. As I said earlier, it kind of fulfills the same role in your dungeon as the gelatinous cube would. The Ascomoid is going to be most effective when you put it in a dungeon with a lot of long hallways and corridors, because then it can chase down its prey and try to trample them without giving them a place to really get away from it. Something else that's kind of neat about these creatures, which I only partially touched on before, is their intelligence. They have an intelligence score of 2, which means they're pretty stupid, like, below some animal intelligence. However, as a fungus, they're not necessarily stupid. They just have a very different way of operating. With this whole mycelial network thing, they can somewhat psychically communicate with other ascomoids. Just other fungus in general, really. What that communication looks, sounds, or feels like to them is completely alien to us. But the point is, they are able to coordinate. So if you have a dungeon where there's a long hallway and like an intersecting path, maybe one of the Ascomoids is chasing the party down that hallway, and another one is going around to cut them off and try to corner them. It can definitely be a pretty startling revelation to your players when they realize that these things are maybe intelligent and maybe working together. 
Like, they're a little bit too coordinated for just random fungus balls. They're also able to recognize, interpret, and extrapolate on pretty basic patterns. Meaning that if you have a potentially villainous character who comes down into this old dungeon and throws them food, whether the bodies of former enemies or just random rotting meat that they have around, eventually the Askimoid will start to understand that creature as the food bringer. Basically meaning, we should not attack and kill them because they continue to bring us food. So after maybe the second or third time, the Askimoids become friendly towards this creature, knowing that they should protect it in order to continue getting food from it. So if you have maybe a villainous character in like a city set campaign, they could be using the Askimoids as a way to dispose of old bodies, which is just causing the Askimoid numbers to grow underground in this like labyrinthian section of the sewer. And maybe if your players get too close to catching them, they run into the sewer, leading your players into this Askimoid filled labyrinth. And the Askimoid fungus is going to try to protect that person because they know that's the person who brings them food. And maybe they consider your players just the next dish on the menu. Something interesting about this is the monster manual entry for this creature originally specifies that they are nomadic. But if they're continuously being fed, they might not move on to other places where there's more food available to them and just stay put in this one spot, which of course is just going to cause their numbers to swell and swell and swell. And eventually, one of two things is going to happen. Either whoever or whatever is feeding them is going to have to start culling them, which might change their outlook towards the feeder, or they're going to hit a critical mass where that individual is no longer able to provide enough food for all of them, and now there's just like hundreds of these weird Askimoid fungus things in the sewer system beneath the town, which are now searching for food, which might cause them to burst forth through the ground into town, and you can see where this is going. And who knows, maybe your players have to prevent that from happening. Or maybe they come across a town where this has already happened, and the town just has this weird crater in the center of it where these things burst burst up out of the sewer system, and now the entire town is coated with fungus and barely any dead bodies, which also might be a very telling feature of what transpired here. Probably a lot of bones though, I don't imagine they eat the bones, so yeah, maybe a lot of skeletons around. And who knows, maybe this has just attracted more myconids and now there's a whole fungus society operating here in this former human city. And where there's fungus, you know there's Zugtami, the lord of fungus. The demon lord of fungus even so that could be an interesting way to introduce her into your campaign i also want to give a shout out to Artie pavlov on twitter for recommending this monster thank you very much but yeah that's pretty much all i've got for these guys today so if you enjoyed this video please do not forget to like and please leave a comment it helps more than you know most importantly tell your friends and if you do want to use this monster as i said in the description below, there's a link to the 5th edition stat block which I've created for it that has everything in there you need to successfully destroy some player characters with a fungus ball. And if you are one of my lovely patrons, you can of course find that 5th edition style monster manual stat block with all the fancy artwork and the write-up and everything on my Patreon page which is also linked in the description below as well. But I digress. Askomoids are pretty dang awesome. I think they're so cool, and I think that if you can find a way to introduce them into your game, your players will have a fun time running around from this giant ball of fungus which rolls around at the speed of 30 feet per round. <laughs>